well, this doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> but uh, it has a, it has great advantages as well because you can, like Tim has done a number of times, wake up at three o'clock in the morning with this great wonderful idea. So um, you know, it has advantages. Maxi is probably the uh, most influential person. She's, she was the first person in my life who, who, who believed in me, absolutely said, yes, 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 yes. She never once said, well, well, yes. And, and in life, you always look for somebody in life who says yes, yes, yes. I had a lot of people that loved me, a lot of people that wanted to help me, a lot of people believed in me, but they would always have a certain negativity, like, well, we can only go so far, or I think you're too outrageous, or you must cut your hair, or, or uh, why don't you wear a suit and tie? Uh, uh, well, look, if you, you know, maybe you could look more like David Frost, you know, and, and Maxie never said that. Maxie always said, yes, yes, yes. And that is the secret of Maxie's success in life, I think. She's made two men multimillionaires. I mean, she's a very shrewd lady and a very beautiful lady. And I, I think, uh, without a doubt, she's, she's, the, she's the top of the class with me. We're a team. We're, we're, I mean, Maxie is me and I'm her. She, she runs the, uh, the office. And, and, and the, uh, the money side, you know, she signs all the checks, and I get on with dreaming. <laughs> When Mr. Bolton came to Hollywood, we ended up meeting uh, Golan of Golan. Canon Films, at that particular moment, was the most powerful producer in, in the world, in, in that type of what you call as exploitation type films, Chuck Norris type films. And he said, if Mr. Botham comes to Hollywood and takes six months of acting lessons, of which anybody has to take just to learn how to move in front of a camera, um, he, he said there's no reason why he would not get offers of movies. Uh, he said he's better looking than Tom Selleck. I, I tend to think that the British media tend to build you up, to knock you down. Uh, uh, and I think they, can we play sport over here? Or well, if you go abroad to play sport, you go abroad to play any sport, you go, we're going to Australia to play. The Australian press build up their players, build up their side, etc., etc. But if you go wrong, then they'll knock you. Over here, they often start knocking us before we even leave, leave to play the opposition. Um, I want to just go... You know, I think in LA you can sort of live out your fantasies. You can be a kid for a day at Disney, and uh, you can go and do some business if you want for another day, and then you can go off down the beach. You can do what you want, and uh, you've got everything there on your doorstep. So I'm quite looking forward to it. The Botham affair started not really. I want. In fact, I never had a contract. I never wanted a contract. I just wanted to get see this man who was supposedly. And by this time, I'd realised was the greatest. I didn't really want to manage. You. He and both of them, particularly anybody. I just wanted to be his friend, and I was, I was so astounded when I heard that what he was earning from the game, and what he was getting paid for pers personal appearances, and, and how he was being paid, you know, a hundred pounds here, and sleeping on people's sofas in flats in London. And I thought, well, I'm used to Bo Jacksons and, and Reggie Jacksons, and uh, people who get paid a million dollars a year for playing a sport if you're the best in America. You know, even even as a DJ. You know, if you're the best, you get a million bucks a year in America. Well, it was always a magical mystery summer because uh, he hit 99 sixes. He took 31 wickets in the Ashes series. He took some catches that people will never forget. I mean, there was one particular catch at the Oval where he was at least five feet off the air, leaning backwards in the slips. Of, I have a picture of it here. Um, he, he walked from uh, John O'Groats to Land's End. Um, and I think he looked happier and healthier. And he loved coming to Berthels. He, he used to say, the moment I come to those gates of Berthels, I feel safe.
Hudson's history in the cricket world at large is uh, a little bit checkered, I suppose is the word. He, um, he had the period with Ian Botham and Viv Richards, which placed Tim's name on the map, well and truly. Um, that didn't last forever, as I hope this will. I think that uh, the book that he's doing might just get across to the public what makes the man tick. And as I know him over these last six or seven years, what makes him tick is a deep love of cricket. Obviously he's a music man from way back, and he wants to combine the two. And as a cricket writer, I would say that there is scope to bring in a little bit of life and music into cricket at levels underneath the very top. And I hope for his sake that it works, because the colour and the joy that he's brought into the game over the last six years ought not to be wasted. I see life, I don't see, I don't see black and white and grey, I see colour. And, uh, and I honestly believe there's got to be added incentive continually to make the player bring out the great. The greatest should be paid the rewards. To the to the winner goes the spoil. Where that's to the winner goes the spoils. You know? I think I can desperately see some razz and tears, some some beans on the table. You know, ten thousand pound winner take all. Let's get into it. Let's find. I want the youngsters in. I bring them on. I, I, I think the game has become a young players rock and roll exhibition. And I, I think what we've got now is a problem. Of the, I think until we get rid of the, the, the players who were big in the 50s and the 60s out of the game, out of the management and get some young people who were like mentally attuned to the 70s, the 80s and the 90s, uh, I, I think we're going to have problems. I think these young players have no identification at all with, with, with such people. I think it's down to rock and roll and real estate. Cricket was the one thing that got me through school. I was not what you call top of the class academia. I was pretty good at English and history and geography, but I was terrible at physics and chemistry and conjugating verbs and phrases. And I could, I could, I like, you know, reading, shaking things like that. I don't mind reading historical things and traveling in my mind. But so cricket was the one commodity that got me. And the headmaster of my school was Strathallan in Scotland. Uh, Eaton of the North, was that? <laughs> um, he was an ex Cambridge University wicketkeeper who I think played a couple of games with Gloucestershire. Uh, and he, he um, I was a quick bowler he, when I first came to, to Strathallan from prep school. And he heard that I dive for, for catches like a swallow or something, whatever those expressions these people have. He said, and he threw me a pair of wicketkeeping gloves. And he said, Here you are, Hudson, you're going to keep wicket. So from 13 years of age, I was coached by this gentleman who kept wicket for Cambridge. And, I meet, and by the time I was 14, I was actually on the first team squad. And here I was at 15, 1955. And then 1956, I got my colours. I, I got my colours here and I was 16, I was in the team here. And then uh, 1957, I'm here. I was very upset that year because I thought I should be captain. And then 1958, only a little picture left. I was the captain. So that was the thing that got me through school and I applied the same feeling to life. I was lucky enough to, to make it in America. And I think it's because of my cricketing background. I had that, uh, that wiki keeper's bravado. <laughs> Well, there's a story here about Mr. Botham. Bit of a death threat on him yesterday. I was very hurt. I, it knocked me off kilter and my wife for, for at least two years. We were, you, if you notice, from like from six, from that 60, 86 to about eighty till till last year, we were we retreated. We retreated to to building the Bertles Bowl cricket ground, and um, sort of uh, living our own lives. Yes, it, it, it was quite it was quite a shock because.